we'll be talking about the reasons and the types of cell division in this video. The cell cycle is made up of interphase and cell division. Cell division is made up of the division of the genetic material and the division of the cytoplasm. We call the division of the genetic material mitosis or meiosis and cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm or the liquid filling of the cell. And usually this occurs simultaneously with the last stage of the dividing of the genetic material. So let's talk about cell division. The purpose of mitosis. Mitosis is the form of cell division that is used for growth and repair and renewal of tissues and structures. You are larger now than you were when you were a baby because of this form of cell division. You also have more cells now than when you were a baby. The overall size of your cells have not changed as you've gotten older and matured and developed. You have more cells now. When mitosis and cytokinesis are completed, The result is two cells, which are genetically identical to each other. Each of these cells may then go on through the cell cycle on their own and divide. This type of cell division is used by all types of eukaryotic organisms. Now mitosis itself can be broken down into five phases. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now you will not be expected to memorize the different phases and what they mean, but you will have the opportunity to see some of these different phases in the virtual microscope lab activity that we'll be doing this week. As I had mentioned, cytokinesis It's the division of the cytoplasm. It happens around the same time as telophase, but cytokinesis is not one of the phases of mitosis. Mitosis is the division of the genetic material. Cytokinesis is the division of the rest of the contents of the cell. Now the purpose of these phases of this cell division is to take those duplicated chromosomes that were made during the S phase of interphase in the nucleus of the parent cell and to divide them evenly between the nuclei of the two new daughter cells. Each duplicated chromosome is divided evenly so that each cell gets a full set of the same information. Now this is one of my favorite videos. It's actually a, a video taken through a microscope of an animal cell going through the stages of mitosis. We see the nucleus in the middle. As the nuclear envelope breaks down, the chromosomes condense. We can see all of these different structures. Those are the duplicated chromosomes that still need to be separated. So in the initial stages, what's happening is that each of these duplicated chromosomes are being connected by structures to the two different ends or poles of the cell. And as they're connected to both ends, it causes this tug of war where everything lines up in the middle. Once all the chromosomes are in the middle, they line up and then briefly separate and they move apart to opposite ends. As they do that, they begin to decondense, new nuclear envelopes reform, and you end up with two daughter cells where you had started with a single cell. Now there is a second form of cell division that's different than mitosis. Mitosis makes two daughter cells that are exactly the same as the parents. Meiosis makes gametes that have half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. 
meiosis is specifically used to make gametes, or sex cells, sperm, and egg. In gametes, the chromosome number is halved. We use the term haploid to show that these cells have only one chromosome of each type, instead of being diploid, meaning having two chromosomes of each type. So most of our body cells are diploid, but the cells that undergo meiosis, the, they result in cells that are haploid. Again, meiosis is only used to make the sex cells. It's not for growth, it's not for repair, it's not for tissue regeneration, it's only for making the sex cells. And so, meiosis only occurs in the gonads. That's the only structure in humans where meiosis occurs. When two haploid gametes fuse, a zygote is formed. And a zygote is diploid after fertilization. So a zygote is a fertilized egg. It's the result of a sperm and egg fusing together. The sperm and the egg are both haploid on their own, but when they combine together, the resulting cell is diploid because it will have two of each type of chromosome. In humans, this will typically be 46 chromosomes, 23 from the sperm, 23 from the egg. That zygote is genetically different than either of the two parents. So let's talk a bit about this concept of haploid versus diploid. Haploid cells have only one chromosome from each homologous pair of chromosomes. Haploid cells are specifically used for sexual reproduction. That's their only purpose. The only haploid cells for most animals are their gametes, or sex cells. And so a type of cell division that produces these gametes will only be to produce the sex cells. The only way for haploid cells to be produced is through this specific type of cell division called meiosis. Meiosis is only used to make the gametes. All of the other cell division in the body is through mitosis. Now, not all organisms reproduce sexually. Meiosis is only needed for organisms that reproduce sexually. And so there are many types of organisms that do not reproduce sexually. These organisms would not need to perform meiosis. When we look at comparing mitosis and meiosis, they both start with interphase. Meiosis actually has two rounds of division. First, the homologous chromosomes are separated from each other in meiosis I, then the sister chromatids are separated from each other in meiosis II. For mitosis, it's only those sister chromatids that are separated through the regular stages of division. Mitosis is considered to be the general form of cell division, and most cells in an organism's body are able to perform mitosis. The only cells that perform meiosis are found in the gonads. And only those cells that are destined be to become gametes. Now the result of our cell division from fertilization through maturity determines who we are physically. The result of meiosis along with random fusion with another gamete during fertilization, determines who our offspring will be genetically. Cancer and errors during cell division are what we'll discuss in our last video for this module.